So now we're over in Unity. Inside Unity, I have a project already set up with a basic terrain and some vegetation that we've grown there just procedurally. So we have a, just a basic scene for us to run around and hopefully for my character to you know, be a successful castaway. And so in the scene, you can see we have just really simple setup. I have one camera so far, the terrain itself, where we have uh, the the vegetation as well and then a directional light is all we have in there I've dragged and dropped my FBX file from 3d exchange into unity now And so we have that here which we can see and whenever we have the character brought in to Unity, and this is good for any FBX file, you'll see that Unity will show you all the different components that make that up and that also includes our motion which is right here, which is that weak idle motion that we created inside iClone. So everything's packaged up tidy in there inside our one FBX file. So when we select the FBX file, you will see that the inspector over in the right hand column, if you have the standard layout for Unity setup, uh, is activated. And in this section, you'll see a preview of your model down below, and then you'll see some basic setup info for the model, the rig, and animations. And so what's important here, if we want to make this a character that's going to be used, say, in a third-party game, which is the premise I have here, is that we want to switch this from a generic type to a humanoid. And so that's really important. We can take this and we want to say we want the avatar definition to be actually from this model so that's fine and we can hit configure uh, and configure will actually show you all of the uh, bone assignment or retargeting that took place inside unity for mechanism to be able to run the character and so you can see the character dummy here this is deep dive it's really not necessary with character creator characters. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and select done because I didn't need to do anything. All you need to do is select this humanoid. So we'll make sure that we turn on humanoid. That's the first step. Remember you will uh, select your FBX file after you've imported and then select rig, turn that to humanoid. And then uh, once it's configured, um, which we have done that, we'll say yes from uh, this model here it's configured and then we want to go over to our animations and inside the animations we have all of those animations that we would have had in our performance track which in this case we just had the one the weak idle and we can preview it down here you can see it um, just do its loop there and so what we want to do is whenever we bring in a motion you'll see that we actually have all green lights here and that's great that's that's kind of like uh, hitting the slot machine but what you want to do is typically whenever I brought in uh, my motion um, this is what it would look like um, uh, and what you want to do is you want to achieve all four being green and so the way you do that is is after you have gone to the rig and, um, well, I'm not gonna do that right now, but I guess I will. Okay, so after you've gone to the rig and you've gone to humanoid and you've done the configuration um, and applied that, you go over to animation. And in this section, this is where we need to set that loop up. So if you just imported your motion um, or your FBX like you normally would, this is about what you would probably see. And so in order to fix that, you just wanna select loop time and loop pose, both these check boxes, and then just grab the playhead marker here. And what you wanna find is looking at all of these different waveforms, you wanna find the gr where you can get green on every single line. So you can see right here is about the only area I've got green on the top right here. It works here, it works here, and it kind of works here so we can make it work we find the green all the way up and down and you can see that now I've got green that means as you can see it says loop match so now I've got a loop I've got a motion that's that's loopable and I didn't have to painstakingly sit there and pick through different uh, keyframes which is great so once we've got that set up, you've got a character that's really ready to get in the scene. So now let's let's go ahead and do that. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to select this main camera here. And let's see where that is. There we go, there's our main camera. And I want to take my character, which is here, 
and we're going to bring that into the scene here in just a moment. First thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to start out by going to my standard assets and I have imported the characters asset folder. And the characters asset folder is very helpful because in Unity 5 they have made this uh, so easy to really customize. And I'm going into the third person character. You also have characters set up for first person and so on, which is really a big time saver. And they have a great learn section on these different character controllers and I I definitely uh, would would say that you should take a look at some of those. Now, <clears throat> the way we set this up is under the third person character, we go into prefabs, and then I'm just gonna get this third person character here, and this is Ethan. And if you've if you've been working with Unity much, then then Ethan is probably near and dear. And so here he is. And so we've got Ethan. Uh, Ethan is in the grass. There we go. And so Ethan is a completed character controller. And so if I just took my main camera here, for instance, and drug it on top of my third person controller and parented that, then if we hit play, you'll see that uh, we'll be able to take off and Ethan will actually take us with him. And so it's it can be really simple to set up a level that you can run around and have some experimentation with and what our goal is going to be to do here is to actually take ethan and we're going to replace him with our character that we just made in character creator and this is a process that you can repeat and repeat and so on and so on and so we are waiting for a compile here okay so now we have the preview ready and so I can just use my WAS and D keys and you can see that Ethan's more than happy to oblige and so we've got a third person character this is your template and so this is what we're going to use to show you how you can bring your own characters into unity and start controlling them so what we do is we go with our third person controller here and we actually go ahead and we go to our assets and we're going to go get our castaway character here and we're going to pull him into the scene like so so i'm going to get him where he's really right there hanging out with ethan now i could also just pull him right into the third person controller and he loads right on top of it which is the easy and preferred way of doing that so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take ethan and we're going to we're going to just delete him completely and if you want to know why i'm doing that the the easiest answer is to tell you go look at the standard assets folder and characters which you can all download it's free and then in third person you have this lovely note here that's made by the developers and they show you exactly the steps that i'm talking about doing so it is a proven method so to speak all right so now we've got our character in the scene but as of right now he's only uh, a child to the controller so if we hit play um, it's not going to be the behavior we want unless we want to have uh, T-Man saves the world. So that's not it. So we're not done. So the next thing we want to do to set your character up, and the reason why I'm showing you these things is because these are all roadblocks that I've hit myself. So these are all areas that are going to help make sure you get your character right. So I've, I've to recap, we've got a third-person character controller that was a prefab that came out of our standard assets. I put that in the scene. I took Ethan, which is our grayscale guy, out. And I've already imported my castaway character that we made in the character creator from iClone. So he's here. So now what I want to do is I want to actually activate that to use with Mechaneme and become my third person character. So the way we do that is we go ahead and select our character again, and we can do that right here in the scene tree, just like I did. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna go up to 
our third person controller. And now you can see the third person controller inspector shows that in fact the controller is the third person animator controller. The avatar however though is still Ethan. And so we need to select our icon here and then instead of Ethan I need my castaway And so we're going to select him. The next thing that we're going to want to do is set up the animation controller to include the new motion that we made. So I'll go ahead and double click on the animation controller and you'll see that we've got a blend tree here. In fact, I'll go back to our base layer so you can see how this works. This is the animation controller that comes standard with the assets from the character uh, folder. And so if we go into the blend tree here, you can see all the different motions that make up what this character is able to do. And there's quite a few. All of these are replaceable and blendable with your own motions. And so all you need to do is take that motion that you have and click and drag it and put it right here. And so you can go to your project window and then back to assets. And then you can locate that motion just like we have here, the idle week. In fact, let me go right back to my blend tree here, project. And then we just click and drag that idle week directly into the blend tree. And then once it's in there, we can go ahead and select preview and we can preview our gameplay. You can see the motions there now. Here's our exhausted kind of weak uh, idle motion that we made inside iClone. And not only that, but we also have now paired up all of the necessary components to make our character compatible with Mechaname. So we can jump, we can run, we can also crouch if we want, and we can move around this way and move here. We can also walk. So you've inherited all of the capabilities of Mechaneme instantly. And so just as fast as animation is capable for your game character in real time with iClone, you also have the real time capability to control it just as fast inside Unity. And iClone Character Creator is the fastest way to develop your own characters and get them animated inside your games. So for more information about iClone, and more information about Reillusion and how to make your own video game characters, take a look at reillusion.com.